Hello and welcome to Africa Today. I am Esther Amopariola. In a world where conflicts often take political and ethnic dimensions, religious extremism, more than anything else, continues to threaten the future of global peace and human existence. Decades of deadly attacks around the world has seen the evolution of terrorism, especially in parts of Africa, where radicals have the potential to strike at will and go on rampage, using religion as a convenient excuse. And so we ask, what are your thoughts on the rural of religious tolerance in peaceful coexistence in Africa and around the world? You can join the conversation and share your thoughts with us on Twitter at TVC Connect. A report now to launch the program and Africa Today will be right back. Welcome on board. It is the first time the acting president, Yemi Onshimbajo, is receiving a Salah homage and is quick to emphasize the need for unity of peoples among Nigerians, insisting that the best principles of humanity are enshrined in the two major faiths. He stresses that the Buhari administration is committed to ensuring it meets the needs of majority of the Nigerian people. It is so important that we work together to make sure that our country is able to take care of its millions of people that, and this is what God expects of us. God expects us to take care of the poor, to take care of the suffering, to ensure that we use government resources only in such a way as to enhance the good of the majority of our people. We are going President Buhari's goodwill message to Nigerians. Oshibadu insists that the country's unity and diversity is what makes the country revered and feared and the Committee of Nations. He also believes the strength of the country is the reason why Nigerians continue to excel in whatever situation and location they find themselves. Just yesterday, I'm sure that we heard uh, the President's message, which he sent on the occasion of the celebration of the Edo Fitri, where he said that this country must remain united. And the reason that he gave is that there are so many countries of the world who envy what we have our endowments as a nation, and that we must remain united because it is only in our unity that we can enjoy those endowments. He prays for the good health and quick return of President Buhari because the country would be better for it. Messages of goodwill and cards were presented to the acting president by the acting chief imam of the Abuja National Mosque, residents of the FCT, and representatives of the Abuja chapter of the Christian Association of Nigeria who had come to felicitate with the Muslim Umar. Nigeria is what we stand for, and it is our beloved nation. In fact, all the Muslims that prayed in the mosque pray for betterment of this country. We are praying that um, this country will continue to remain one entity, indivisible nation. We also pray that Nigeria will not be disintegrated. The acting president's message to all citizens is for them to draw from the lessons of tolerance imbibed from the fasting period and to recognize that Nigerians, no matter their religious or ethnic leanings, need each other now more than ever for the growth and development of all parts of the Nigerian nation. More than a billion Muslims around the world are taking part in the Eid al-Fitri festivities as the month-long Ramadan fast came to an end. And this year, Eid celebrations comes amid ongoing crisis in the Middle East, civil war in Syria, and regular insurgent attacks in parts of Africa. Joining me in the studio on Africa Today, I have Dr. Lukman Abdurrahim, a Muslim cleric and the president of the Muslim Congress, and to my right, I also have Bishop Stephen Adegbite, a clergy of the Methodist Church in Nigeria. Good to have you, gentlemen. Thank you program. very much. Thank you. Now, let me begin with you, uh, um, Reverend. How relevant are religious celebrations to issues affecting our world today? Oh, well, definitely you will. I also agree with me that without religion, Nigeria or the world cannot exist. Mm. Because God created the world, in Genesis chapter 1 from verse 1, there was nothing, but he created something out of nothing. And we call it ex nihilo. So if God has done that, and from, man, from the time he created man, the first man, Adam and Eve, 
he asked them what to do in the Garden of Eden, and they've been assisting. So religion is as old as man. Mm. And the moment they deviated from what God asked them to do, there was punishment measured out to them. And since that time, we still face that word of pandemonium when they fell from grace to grass and they left the garden of peace and joy and they now come into the world of trouble of Hulabalu and Mahu Mahu mm. up to today. Mm. So definitely there was a need for reconciliation and God brought man back to himself. So that is why religion is very important in any environment in, in the society. world, in any society. Yeah. Once you don't have religion, there will be trouble. And that is why one of the sociologists said, mm. it is the society that men even worship. Because from birth, you have how you should be. When you want to get married, there is a religious right. When you die, there is a religious right. Mm. And so we it's also a part of man generally. It's, it's passage. All right, let me quickly come to you, uh, Dr. Lukman. Okay. What does religion teach? Or your religion, I am, you're a Muslim. Yeah. Now, tell us what your religion teaches in terms of uh, coexistence with other religions to tolerate one another. Okay, thank you for, for inviting me. First and foremost, the word Islam itself actually emanated from the word Aslim, that is submit to the will of Allah, mm. and also the word Salam, peace. The essence of Islam is for man to be with peace with God, as well as extend that peace to fellow men. And that's why when we meet ourselves, we say, Assalamu alaikum, peace be unto you. When we terminate all our prayers five times daily, we say, Assalamu alaikum, peace unto you. And also, the garden that God promised us is called Daru Salam, Abode of Peace. Mm. So if you look at the word peace, 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 Islam actually emphasizes peace in everything we do. Mm -hmm. Even for those who don't believe in what you believe in Quran, it said, when you are conducting your affairs, and those who don't believe in your uh, activities mm. actually molest you or harass you, said, salam, salam. You should mm. be peaceful with them mm. because of ignorance and um, uh, what we can call uh, extremism. Mm. If someone does not agree with you, there is tendency for that person to criticize you. Instead of attacking, said, peace, peace. So mm. summary is that Islam has come to the world to come and embed peace between God and men and also among men. Yeah, yeah. Right, right before now, you, you just mentioned something. You mentioned extremism, and Ex that is part of what we see in our continent today, yeah, in yeah. almost all parts of the world. Yeah. Now, what factors would you say is inducing religious intolerance and fanaticism? The first one is ignorance. For most Muslims who are ignorant, and for those who are not even Muslims who are ignorant, there is tendency for them to exceed the limits. And that is why the first thing that the prophet we are taught in Quran chapter 64 is that they should recite the book to men. When you recite the book to men, the do's and those, what God wants, the rules and regulations, there is tendency for them to behave normally. Mm. But for those who are not well informed, they will use their own whims and caprices to act in the human society. And by so doing, they can go beyond the limits. So ignorance is number one. Second one is indoctrination. Mm. There are some people, it's not as if they are really ignorant, but they did not get the knowledge of the religion from the right source. They have indoctrinated. If someone does not agree with you, the next thing is to burn down the sanctuary of that particular person, which, if you look at the books of God, is actually against that. So ignorance, indoctrination, they are very, very important. Mm. When you are well informed and you learn religion from the right source, you are going to be balanced in your approach to life and the situation. But why do you think this spread is taking a new dimension? Because we have people, we have uh, lone wolves, for instance, going yeah. about in the name of Islam, yeah. you know, perpetrating violence and, you know, causing more harm. And the religion we understand is talking about peace. See, for those who understand the political uh, structure of Nigeria, there are so many ignorant folks around. Uh, around. Mm. But the politician will not be able to mobilize them for their evil activities until they put religious coloration. For instance, if you have a community where people are ill-informed about Islam and the politician wants to use them for his own political agenda, he will just tell them, give his own narrative that a particular ethnic group does not like you because of your religion. Easily they will rally around such mm. a mobilization mm. to unleash terror against the opponent. So that is what politicians do it in this part of uh, the world. 
But for those who are informed, mm. even if you are induced with money, positions, and so forth, the first thing, what is the position of religion on this particular issue? Mm. Take, for instance, tribalism. It's categorically stated in the uh, saying of Professor Sada, it's not one of us who will cause to tribalism. It's not one of us who will fight for tribalism. And it's not one of us who will die for tribalism. So if you mobilize it for tribal Reasons. agenda, you are not likely going to succeed. But for those who are ignorant, who are being indoctrinated, politicians can use money and also their own narrative to so induce them to aim. exactly. All right, let's hold your thought. Now we need to go on a quick break. You're watching Africa Today, and we have been looking at the role of religious, religious tolerance in peaceful coexistence in Africa and around the world. Welcome back. A journey back in time creates a sense of history littered with the corpses of those who lost their lives as a result of religious intolerance. In 2015, Pope Francis took a security risk by visiting a mosque under the siege, under siege rather, from armed Christian militia in the Central African Republic, delivering a message of peace and reconciliation in a show of solidarity. Now, Reverend, before we get on, let's look at this situation very critically. Now, we have religious extremism taking its new dimension. We have lone wolves around. We have those who feel that they are doing it for a good, a common cause, which best known to them. But my question is, why does religious extremism, you know, continually grow despite efforts being taken from the church, being taken from the government, being taken by the people to curb this trend? Why are we having this thing too difficult to handle? Well, as long as you have human beings who have free will, you are likely to have such situation. But the only thing we will uh, say is to let people know what they believe in. Like my brother said, if you are a true Muslim, you cannot be violent in your approach. Mm. Because there are four types of jihad. I study comparative religion in the university. And I know before you get to the fourth one, you cannot see anybody you want to fight. Mm -hmm. Because you yourself, you must re-examine yourself again before you can now say you want to pick your arms and fight the other person. Mm. And of course, in Christianity, in Romans chapter 12, verse 18, it says, as much as is within you, live in peace with all men. And one of the names of Jesus Christ is Prince of, of peace. peace. So if you are following a Prince of Peace, how can you be violent in your approach? So to me, people who are extremists are not people who believe either in Islamic teaching or in Christianity. Mm. They don't know the God they are following. Because our God is a God of, of unity, peace. is a God of peace. Mm. And he has given life to man. And he has said nobody have the right to, to kill. kill. Right. So if you don't give life, you cannot take it. Mm. It's in the com uh, com commandments mm. given to Moses. Mm. Thou shall not kill. Mm. Kill he did. So if you kill, it means you are not a child of God. Mm. So why must you now say people must follow your own religion by force? And any religion that carries force is not a religion. So that is another thing entirely. Mm. And I know in Islamic world, in Christian community, none of the two religions preaches violence mm. to anybody. Mm. So people that are doing this are just using the name of religion to perpetuate evil. And what would you say about those who have resorted to hate speeches of recent, you know, against a religion or against a tribe or an ethnic group, in particular in Nigeria, where we have hate speeches of late because of reasons, well, which are not too, you know, very good for the society. But if we were to say, what role now can religious uh, leaders like yourself do to, well, change the narrative, which seems to have taken a little bit of a, will I say, importance or prominence, rather, in the media of recent? Yes, we just concluded Bishop's Council in the Methodist Church in Humaya. And one of our communicate points is to let people know that whether you are from the east, you are from the south-south, or from the north, Nigeria belongs to everybody. When they were having the civil war, probably I was just two years old when it was brought to an end. Mm. I've never witnessed one. But what I've read, what I've seen about war, says to me, war is not the solution to any problem. And there is no war that is won in the battlefront. It's always at the table. 
So why do you go to the, bat, uh, the battlefield when we know it's coming back to the table? So people that are calling for war, they don't know what they are saying. Nigeria is one indivisible entity. Yes, we have our differences, but we can resolve them amicably. Mm. Let us have a genuine dialogue. Let there be a program for people to come together and let us iron those issues one by one. If it takes one or two years, we can do it and we can fix Nigeria. But with war, with hate speeches, it will not help anybody. And that is why we condemn it in its entirety. Whether in the southeast or in the north, nobody can issue ultimatum for anybody in Nigeria. We were born together and we are going to live together. We must uh, live in peaceful coexistence with one another. United we stand, divided we fall. All right, let me quickly come to you, Dr. Lukman. I, okay. I think you share the same sentiments exactly. as uh, Bishop. What yeah. would you have to say? Well, in addition to what uh, Bishop said, um, you know, I mentioned earlier on that uh, press said categorically there was a time when people were calling to tribalism. You now said emphatically that it is not none of us who calls to tribalism, fight for tribalism, and die for tribalism. Calling to tribalism, of course, has to do with each species. Mm. I'm better than you. Your tribe is this. Your tribe is that. As a Muslim, you are not supposed to partake in that. So we condemn it even in our Salah message to Muslims and non-Muslims, to Aousas and the Igbos. Whether we like it or not, God has arranged our coexistence. And uh, what we need is actually good governance. Some people unleash bad governance on us, corruption, lack of transparency, infrastructural neglect. All this has led to frustration and uh, disillusionment. So, and you see that play out in the way people relate. Mm. It is not AUSA that destroyed this country. It's both AUSA, Igbos, and Yoruba. So if you must fix Nigeria, we should come to the round table and bring in good people who are going to reposition Nigeria for the best, not mm. using religion or ethnic uh, sentiment. It won't work. Mm. In Southern Sudan, it was used. The country was divided up to now. This uh, Southern Sudan, they were better off than... Than they were before. Exactly. So mm. just to tell you that... Um, Divide is not actually the solution. The best solution. Yeah. Uh, and what other ways would you proffer as the best solution? Because even though we have religious intolerance and yeah. we understand that it has been, you know, been a part of man existence exactly. right from the start, yeah. we have the creation of, you know, international criminal courts to yeah. try cases where you have criminal, you know, yeah. cases that are not of benefit to human existence. But aside from all this, now as a religious leader. What would you have to say to those out there who are hearing you right now to believe and to stand, to stand behind the truth which says Islam is not, it's not, it's not about hate, yeah. it's not about violence, it's not about um, Islamophobia, yeah. which most people have these days. Exactly. What would you have to say to them? First and foremost, to all Muslim faithful, you must have peripheral understanding of Islam. Buy a Quran, either in English, Yoruba, or Igbo. Read. Then, beyond your peripheral knowledge, if you need to learn more, learn from informed scholars. Then scholars too, they should do what we call de-radicalization. Uh, de there are some people who have read their uh, junks, mm. either on the internet, through poisonous uh, preaching and so on and so forth. On our pulpits, we should de-radicalize them by telling that Islam is a middle religion, no extremism, no laxity. And more importantly, the media also has a role to play in, of course, documentaries that will bring us together, development aspect of religion, rather than things that will divide us. Mm. They are very, very important. Even traditional rulers too. There should be a platform where Muslim leaders and Christian leaders will uh, discuss and talk about developing their various uh, community. Mm. When Muslims see Christian and the Muslim leaders actually meeting, it will send signals to the young ones that there is need to come together. To the coexist. Exactly, yeah. And now, uh, Bishop, what can be done to, well, you know, uh, bridge this religious divide that threatens human existence? Well, what we need to do as religious leaders, number one, is to preach the gospel undiluted. Let people know the truth. Well, the Bible says when you know the truth, the truth will set you free. True. And what is the truth about the religion is to let them know that the founder of the religions are people of peace. And if you want to follow them, you need to follow them doggedly and dogmatically. Mm. Because in the scripture, in Revelation, you cannot add to any of the words in the scripture. 
and you must not remove any. Mm. So if you have decided to be a child of God, then you know you must live by the dictate of the scripture. And once you study the dictate of the scripture properly, and you put into practice, one thing is to read, another one is it's to practice. practice it. So you must live it. Christianity is a way of life. So you cannot put something aside and not take the one that is convenient for you. No. You must live by the word and you must let people around you know that they are your neighbors. And if I say to you, your enemies are your neighbor and you should look after them. Jesus gave his disciples an example. Somebody was moving from Jericho and to Jerusalem. He was attacked on the way by robbers. Even religious leaders looked the other way. But somebody came who ordinarily shouldn't have gotten anything to do with him. Mm. But he assisted. And we said, who is the neighbor of the man that was a victim? Of course, the man that assisted. Go and do likewise. So when that is done, and we let our children also know what we believe in. Mm. Let them follow what we believe in. See to the fact that they follow you either to the mosque or to the church. Mm. Don't go to church or mosque and leave your children at home. They are watching the internet within seconds. They can read many things. And that is the place they get all this indoctrination. And they begin to practice unknowingly to you. Mm. They are in school, they have joined group. But when they come back, ensure that you know they are friends. Don't keep them off. Don't be too busy not to know what your children are doing. Because some of them have even killed their own parents. And their parents will not know they've joined gangs, they are doing this, they are doing that, they've gone into drugs and mm. other things. Mm. And once they are into all these novelous acts, there's nothing they cannot do. Mm. They can handle gun, they can kill, and it's nothing to them. They've told them that is how to become a man. Mm. But that is not it. Mm. You must let them know that you don't give life, you don't take it. All right, but, but you just mentioned something that struck me there, religion. You know, religion itself, you said you should allow your children to follow you to, follow you to the church or to the mosque so they can understand the meaning of why we are here on earth. But religion, so to speak, has not really helped matters. What I mean to say is we have lots, proliferation of churches all over. Mm. You know, we have them, there are lots of them in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. We also have mosques as well. But we have a huge hate divide so are we saying now that even though the proliferation proliferation of churches hasn't really done much so what can we do now where does it you know where, where does it really which responsibility does it behove on one to ensure that we do not have hate we do not have a uh, discord we do not have things that makes us see ourselves differently aside from going to church there are three organs that, is, that must be responsible for that. Number right. one is the family front. Okay. Number two is the society itself. And number three is the government. Because the reason why I say the family, everybody in Nigeria, whether you are a man or a woman, anybody in government is from a family unit. And if you are from a well-trained family, you can't go out there and mess up as a leader, be it president, be it vice president or governor or anybody. Because you know there is a name of your family, which family cherishes a lot in Africa. The name of a family is more important than silver or gold. So if you do that and you know it, you will protect it. All right. Let me quickly come to you, Dr. Lukman. What would you have to chip in to what he just said? I think in addition to what uh, Reverend has said on the issue of um, proliferation of churches and mocks, it's, I always emphasize understanding. There's what we call the concept of farm in Islam. Mm. Knowledge is different, but comprehensive understanding of the religion is, matters. Mm -hmm. I attend programs of other Islamic organizations. I deliver lectures for them. I perceive them as um, a sort of a brand of umbrellas. Mm. The purpose of umbrella is to shield us from rain or sunshine. Sun. So the color does not matter. That is what proliferation denomination is all about. What is the essence of that umbrella? To shield me. I can worship in Nasfat, Companion. It does not matter because of my understanding. Mm. Why am I doing it? Am I not worshiping God? Even during the time of Prophet Muhammad, peace be, be upon him, he doesn't share religious faith with Christians, but mm. Christians came from Nigerian. They were in the natural yes, about to round up. And they were allowed to sleep over in the mocks. 
the humanity matters. On the particular, they saw a Jew hmm, who was being taken away and he stood up with his companions. Yeah, so he's and not seconds. a most sad human being. All right. Humanity. It's very important. All right. Let's yeah. thank you very much, uh, Dr. Lukman Abdurahim, Abdur uh, Muslim cleric and president of the Muslim Congress. Yes. Thanks a lot. Yeah. And as well, Bishop Stephen Adegbite, clergy of the Methodist Church in Nigeria. Thanks a lot. Now, the world's two largest faiths, Christianity and Islam, make up almost half of the world's population at a time when religion is becoming more of a weapon of war rather than an instrument of peace. In obeying God's purpose for religion, the necessity of love and unity of peace should be a common ground where everyone takes up the responsibility of making the world a peaceful, better place. And that is our package for today. But don't forget to join the conversation as usual on Twitter at TVC Connect. And also follow me for updates around Africa at Esther TVC News. Until the next one, I am Esther Amokwariola. And always remember, this is Africa. Bye for now.